Hello, today I am going to show you how to replace the gasket on the Whirlpool Duet uh, front load washing machine. Mine has is about 10 years old and it's got a little mold on it and I've tried my best to get it off but uh, I think it's just time to replace it. And I'm a little curious about the filter that's inside these things that's very hard to get to unless you take off the gasket. So uh, might as well replace it while I'm checking that filter. So uh, let me start by saying unplug your washing machine and uh, let's look at the tools. The first thing you're going to need is a quarter inch driver that I've got on this little screwdriver here uh, or a nut driver. So quarter inch and you'll need a Torx head to unloosen some of the screws, I guess is what you would call them. Uh, I might need a wrench when I get to the filter part. I've got some needle nose pliers, but I also have some locking and, uh, pliers and some clamps that I've heard might be useful. And then I went out and bought this, which is going to be very helpful for stretching the spring that holds this gasket on. Uh, this seemed to be one of the hardest parts of the entire operation. So we'll see how this tool works. Uh, I think it will work well. And then finally, a good old Costco pan to catch water that might come out when I undo the filter. The first things we're going to do is take off the top. And the way you do that is there's a quarter inch I think there are three quarter inch nuts that I need to loosen. So one, and then center one, and one over there. I'm not going to worry about showing you those. The top off. Mm, okay, yeah, slide it back a little bit. Take it. Okay, let's see. Oh. There we go. Just slide it back a little bit, pull it off, put it to the side to take out your uh, washing detergent holder. Put that on the side. Okay, there are two Torx screws that are in the uh, washing or the detergent area that you can just. Screws on the corner here are nuts. You have to loosen up. Same quarter inch nut. All right, the next part you have to take off this control panel. Some tabs back here. There's one, two, three, four. That you, just, you don't really have to push anything in. You can just pull up and out. And there's a wire there, so you don't want to yank it or anything like that. That connects everything. Now here comes the what are potentially the trickiest part is there is a spring and wire that goes around the entire gasket. And uh, let's go down here. The way you access it, I think you can see that spring here right here. It's a long spring, about three inches long. And uh, they recommend using needle nose pliers to pull it off. Uh, I've heard that's can be a bit of a problem. Maybe not taking it off, but putting it back on could be a real pain. So let me show you the tool. This is the tool that has a I have a nipple on one end that will fit in the hole holding one side of the spring. It's a screw that you can use to push. And a second movable uh, nipple that will touch the uh, other side of the spring. You can just push it like this to move it and make it larger. So let's see if we can do this. 
this far end first. And oh, I gotta shorten this up a little bit. Oh, but it looks feels like it's in there. Now I am going to I'm turning it. Probably pulled out about an inch worth of give on this spring. I think I'm about ready to to do the maneuver to get this thing off. We go a little bit further. Okay, so got the spring done. All right, here comes this wire off. Oh, that's quite easy. But let's see if I can get the spring out. The spring is holding onto that rubber gasket. All right, I think you can see pretty well that it's hold that. I'm actually just going to leave that on there, not take take it off. Put it to the side. Uh, it'll make it easier when I put it back together. All right, now we can take off Ooh, the gasket. It comes off pretty easily. There, just gonna pull it off and throw it in here. You'll notice that the, over here where the detergent comes in, the there's a spigot that kind of comes through the gasket. I'm just gonna detach that and throw it in. And the next step is I have to take off the uh, the door itself. So I'm gonna grab my torque screw and undo this. Um, and pull the locking mechanism out. Just let it hang there. Couple more bolts down here at the bottom. Let's see, one, two, three, four. Four of them, and uh, because I have a storage bin underneath, it's uh, relatively accessible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take those off. Okay, this last nut was a little harder to get out. Don't know why, maybe it was just because all the weight was resting on it. Uh, and there, now there are also three nuts to take off at the top. All right, so there's one, two, three, and it's a 5 16th nut. Okay, well, let's uh, take a pause from the gasket and talk a little bit about the drainage of this thing. So you can see that the water comes down out of the tub into this thing. This is actually, from what I understand, a filter that holds it before it gets to a pump. And that pump pumps the water out. Um, the pump is still good. But uh, I'm curious, if I loosen this, how dirty the filter will be. Um, now, what I've understood is that it actually... Uh, I was hoping there'd be some space under it so I can catch the water as it comes out. Okay. So, there's a red uh, rubber element here that holds this hole here, you can pull it up and detach that. And then there are two other rubber ones on each side. That is, you, if you push back, you can get these tabs out from under and that will give you some leeway to actually get something in there. So I'm going to now undo the water. I already did a little bit of this and it came out, it smells as one might expect. Oh, here we go. The big reveal. Oh, yes. There is something. Ah, ha, ha. That's interesting. 
That looks like an entire shoulder pad of some sort. What else? Ooh, all sorts of hair and elastic. Fun, fun, fun. Okay. Well, I am going to clean this out. And uh, I bet my washer will smell and perform a lot better. All right, so putting it back in, the trough goes on the bottom. You can see that there is a little tab over here that goes over to the pump or an open area for the pump. I think it's pretty foolproof. You can't get it back in unless you insert it that way. Tighten it up. Uh, let's hope that's in there. Good. And uh, let me see if I can dry out that smelly water. You know, actually, these rubber things are just flexible enough. You can just push them back, and it won't pop out. You just push it back until the rubber pops over the little tab. Cool. And now, let's pull this red one back. Make sure it's tight in there. Make sure everything's dry. All right, back to our regularly scheduled uh, issue. Now, the next move is there is another seal up here that has a screw that holds on a, another wire. So I am going to loosen that. It's just a Phillips head screw. So let me grab one. Okay, so here is the screw. You actually need a Phillips head to get in there. Uh, I was going to try to use a mechanical one, but it's actually relatively loose because it's just tightening a spring as you unloosen it. It gets more and more loose, uh, so it's not too bad. It's just a little awkward to get to, but once you have the door out, off, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, don't think you have to undo it all the way. Just enough to get this wire off. A couple of things you might want to notice uh, is just the positioning of everything and the orientation of various parts. Like here's the center line. Uh, you're going to want to remember how this all went on and line up everything accordingly. Okay, now I can see it's coming off and since I've detached the uh, since I detached the hose I can pull it out and I'll put it with the other wire okay you missed the big reveal I took off the gasket um, it came early but you'll notice there's a metal there's plastic on the outside and there's a metal here um, when you put the new one in you're gonna there's a flange that you're gonna want to put in all along there um but yeah let's let's clean this up first all right time for the new seal so uh you can tell which end is which because there's a little thing up here that uh, points up and there are two nozzles one's closed the other one is ready for you to reinsert but first thing let's um up and over the, this outer gasket. Make sure you get everything kind of positioned right with the top being at the top at 12 o'clock. So get it on there. You have to get it over the plastic flange there. Easy at the top. Let's see how the bottom goes. The rubber is pliable enough that you can just pull it and get it over this. I'm being careful just to make sure I can feel where the 
if it's truly over the flange. It's, you want, ah, oh, there we go. Want it to be waterproof. Okay, I can feel going around the side here. Oh no, now it's time to reinstall the outer boot clamp. Get a couple things out of the way. Align it so it's at the top. Make sure that it gets over the that first lip there. Um, yeah, I'll let that orient it. If it's a little tight, just go and loosen that screw a little bit. But I, th I think I got it. Uh, maybe. Actually, I'm gonna loosen it up just a little bit more. Okay. There's the screw. Just tighten it up, tighten it up, tighten it up. And that'll be over the first flange. Hopefully hold everything tight and waterproof at that level. Getting the inner one is important and maybe even more difficult. Ooh. Got to get that up and over the plastic. Got to get up and over the plastic outer thing, but between it and the, the metal. Okay, there's, there's a little bit. Good start. I don't know if you can see, but start there. Let me orient here. Hoping this is getting in there. Let me start again at the bottom and work my way up. Okay. I think if you pull back this little flange, you can get enough of the meat of the gasket and kind of force it into that space. And that makes it pretty good. Okay, this one's a little tight. Let's see. Okay, I can see that I got like another six inches or so here. Just pulling on the meat of the gasket, uh, pushing it down and in. Okay. Uh, thump. I just heard a thump that kind of sounded like everything sealed. That is, that's kind of a satisfying sound. Uh, cool. So, all right, so what I just did is I pulled back this gasket and put it in between plastic that is underneath it and in between there's about a quarter inch space all around. Kind of inspecting my handiwork here. It's actually easier to see. You get at the top and there's this kind of triangular thing. Uh, and I think I got everything in there. This is actually a good way to check. Just get out your, ooh, and don't get too, uh, ooh, gross, there's some gunk in there. Um, good way to check your handiwork before you, let's see, is that, yeah, I think that's good. Okay, the next part is to get the dispenser for the detergent back into its seal. 
Let's see how tight this is. Wrestle, wrestle. I've heard if you put a little bit of soap on it, it might go a little easier. I might. Uh, I think we're good. Okay, I will call that victory. Uh, maybe. Hold on. The original rubber part that's coming down from the dispenser. I think that's good. I think that's good. Yeah. All right. It's a little awkward. This is about... 20 pounds, not too bad, but there are some nice tabs there to hold things. All right, all right, reinstall the 5 16 bolts. Might need to, oops, might need to lift up a little bit as you're driving in the bolts. Yeah. Make sure you go in the right hole. You gotta put in the lower screws back to a, a quarter inch nut. Okay, um, when you're putting the door back on, make sure that you leave this open a little bit because you don't want it shutting all the way, knocking things out of the way. But you do have to now get the locking mechanism back here. Jeez, I was a little confused on how that goes. Uh, okay, there's a... The button goes at the top, the latch goes in there, and there's a screw screw. So get your torque spit out and reinsert that. Now these are actually the, the shorter of the screws. Uh, you'll remember the there was a Torx up at the um, detergent, but that is a little longer. So let's reach in there. Over tighten it if you're using a machine like mine. Be careful. That should be good. All right, now you're going to want to pull the flange out and make sure it gets over this metal lip here because that's where, you know, the rubber over the metal lip and then you're going to realign that spring-loaded clip that holds it tight there. Um, as you work it around, I, I think it, it's going to feel right that you're going to get it in there tight. You're going to pull, pull it all out. Now one tip I had was told was to put a little clamp at the top there just to hold it while you realign everything. Um, I think it's fine. Uh, I'm going to, I think it, oh, actually you put the clamp to hold the metal in place. Okay. So what I've done is I've put the metal circle back on and I've got the clamp there at the top holding it in place just so it doesn't fall out and as you can see I've got the little tool at the bottom holding the spring open and I'm going to try to do the final see if there's any swearing 
Okay, I can tell there's a little tension on the, this. I've got it all the way around the right side. Make sure I get it all the way in on this side. Still a bit of tension. Okay. I'm going to make this even bigger. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. But I can tell that's in there. Okay, let's uh, just looking around, making sure it's all right. And now I'm just gonna loosen this, where as I loosen it, it actually tightens the spring. So the spring will go back to holding its tension. And uh, there, it's out. All right. Now we reattach the control panel and there's some tabs. You just have to make sure everything lines up. That's, that's easy enough. Um, and there's some bolts here I need. I think there were bolts, right? Yes, two bolts. This is boring. All right, and then I'll put in these Torx screws where they came out of. Okay, so I've just finished the repair. I ran a cycle. It doesn't look like there's any leaking. Uh, I'm gonna open up the door a little bit and see. There's some water there, but nothing, yeah, nothing leaked out. Good. Uh, wipe down everything when you're finished. You, that will prevent the mold from growing, but it also helps not to have things lodge in your filter, like a bra pad or a piece of elastic or other stuff. Uh, a couple of things. So I bought my uh, replacement gasket from appliancepartspro.com. They did a good job. It was kind of expensive, like $150, but a uh, good part. Uh, looked like it was Whirlpool certified part. Um, get yourselves one of those expander things. Frankly, after reading the comments on other videos, I don't think I would have attempted this if I did not invest about like $30 in this tool. Uh, this tool takes the difficulty level of this repair from like on a scale of four to uh, one to five, five being the most difficult from maybe like a four, uh, if you didn't have this tool being kind of difficult, a lot of swearing, trying to get that thing on, getting a position right. This tool just makes that pretty easy. I did not drop an F-bomb too many times. Uh, in this entire process. So it's uh get one of these without it. I would say it's, it's kind of annoying that you have to take off the front of this in order to replace the entire flange. Uh, even more annoying is that you have to take off the front to get to the filter. Whirlpool, if you put a filter in, you might need to clean the filter every once in a while. And do you need to have a qualified technician come just to remove it and turn it and get rid of the gunk that's in the filter? Probably not. Um, but hey, if you're going to check your filter, might as well replace the gasket at the same time. Um, so yeah, uh, I hardly recommend if you're like me 10 years in, uh, you're seeing some issues, go ahead, uh, buy the tools, buy the parts, give it a shot.